in this example problem, we're going to find the solid, the volume of the solid created when the region bounded by the equation y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, and then these lines x equals 1, x equals 4, and, x equal, and the x-axis, uh, when that's rotated about the y-axis. So let's, uh, let's try to figure out what this region sort of looks like. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, that of course is a parabola. And the vertex for a parabola, my x-coordinate is just negative b over 2a. My b here is negative 4, and a is 1. Right? Those are just my code, those are the values here. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. The c doesn't really become part of this computation here. So that ends up just being 2, and then my y-coordinate would be 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. So that's 4 minus 8, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So my vertex is the point 2, 1. We're going as x goes from 1 to 4, so if I have x equals 1, then y would be 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 5. That would be negative 3 plus 5, which would be 2. So we get the point 1, 2 on the vertex. That would be here. And if I let x equal 4, Well, y then would be 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 5. 16 minus 16 plus 5 would just be 5. So that would be the point 4, 5. And so that's my parabola. That's my vertex at 2, 1. So it's going to come down there and then up to this point here. And we're saying this is bounded then by the lines x equals 1 and x equals 4. And also bounded by the x-axis right here, and then I'm rotating it about the y-axis, so I'm rotating this way. So if we're looking at this and we're going to find the volume, we're going to have to have some representative rectangles that are going to move across this region. They could either be vertical or horizontal. The problem is if I try to use horizontal rectangles here, um, you know, it's, it's just a little bit problematic. Uh, you know, here on this bottom part, this rectangle, of course, the left endpoint is along x equals 1, the right endpoint is along x equals 4. And when we get up here, we run into a trouble. Uh, we, we would have to set up a couple different integrals um, because I don't have a rectangle going all the way across here. It, it wouldn't be impossible to use horizontal rectangles, but it's going to be a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So in that case, we say, no, let's, let's erase. Let's go back in time here. It's nice that we can do that with computers. What would happen if we did vertical rectangles? Well, a vertical rectangle, we would always just have that the top of the rectangle is along the parabola and the bottom of the rectangle is along the x-axis. That's a much better development for what we want. The thing is, if we do that here now, remember we're rotating around the y-axis. That means this rectangle is parallel to my axis of rotation. And if we were doing this and rotating it, that rectangle would get, you know, rotated over here. And we would end up with this sort of development. Right? It would be that cylindrical shell. So we would have to find the volume of that shell you know, the volume of this shell here, and then add that up as this rectangle moves across from x equals 1 to x equals 4. So again, that, let me get rid of some of that. It's, it, it's occluding what we need to look at, but that's what we would have there. Okay, so what's the volume of a shell? Well, for the volume of this shell, oops, I need a pencil. It's the circumference I would get, so that's 2 pi r 
times the height of the shell, and then my thickness of the shell. And the thickness here is going to be a distance delta x, right? My rectangle has a tiny thickness in the x direction. That's going to be my variable of integration. So how do I find r? How do I find h? r is the distance from the rectangle to the axis of rotation. What's important to realize is then that this rectangle is tracked by the variable x. I'm going to integrate between x equals 1 and x equals 4. As I'm doing that, these little representative rectangles are marching across, all the way across this region. This little x variable keeps track of where that rectangle is. So the radius is going to be this distance here from my x-coordinate to this value over here, which is, of course, at x equals 0. So my radius is x minus 0. It's this, it's this x distance here. The right endpoint is x. The left endpoint is x equals 0. This is x equals x and x equals 0. So I just take x minus 0. That's my radius. The height, of course, is going to be this value here. And the top is my function x squared minus 4x plus 5 and my bottom is just y equals 0 so I take the top minus the bottom and I'll get then x squared minus 4x plus 5 minus 0 and so I get 2 pi x times x squared minus 4x plus 5. Oops, I left off my delta x. Or that would be 2 pi, multiply the x in, x to the third minus 4x squared plus 5x delta x. So my overall volume for this solid I'm going to integrate as my x-coordinate goes from 1 to 4. Oops, forgot my 2 pi. So my volume is 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 4. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x dx. So I'm going to plug in 4. No, I'm take the antiderivative. So x to the 4th over 4 minus 4x to the 3rd over 3 plus 5x squared over 2. That has to be between 1 and 4. So now I'm going to plug in 4. So I get 4 to the 4th over 4 minus 4 times 4 cubed over 3 plus 5 times 4 squared over 2 and then minus, I have to put in 1. 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 4 times 1 to the third over 3 plus 5 times 1 squared over 2 running out of room there so 4 to the fourth that's 256 4 minus 256 over 3, 5 times 16, we get 80 over 2, minus 1 fourth, 
here, be careful to distribute. Minus a negative becomes a plus 4 thirds. And then minus 5 halves. Just check those signs. Make sure that all works. If you need to show more detail than that, of course you can. And so what do we get here? Um, so 256 over 4, that's 64. Um, we've got minus 256 over 3 and plus 4 over 3. So that would be minus 252 over 3. 80 over 2 is 40. And then we have a minus 1 fourth and a minus 5 halves. I think we've got everything still accounted for there. Uh, 252 is divisible by 3, it turns out. So if we divide by 3, uh, we get uh, 84. And of course here we could do a common denominator, minus one-fourth and then minus ten-fourths instead of five-halves. So negative twenty plus forty we get twenty minus eleven-fourths. So let's see, twenty would be eighty over four. 80 minus 11 gives me 69 over 4. And if I cancel the 2 and the 4, I will get a volume of 69 pi over 2. And uh, so that's how this shell method works uh, to find the volume of that solid.